Hi, guys. Say that you miss me. I need to hear from you. You can't live without me. The truth, not the clues. You say that you want me. That was the case. Today you despise me. And I can't breathe again. Pour my soul out to you. Watch you keep it back. Drop the ties that bind you. And loosen up the slack. Hanging from the highest limb. Still you don't see me. You always try to cut me down. Let me live. It's bittersweet. Now you won't see me. You want nothing to do with me. Waste like garbage. Never getting back to me. Not even a whisper. But what I really want to hear. I guess I am burning. To never trust again. Pour my soul out to you. Watch your kid it back. Cut the ties that bind you. Loosen up the slack. Hey, from the highest level. Still, you don't see me. You always try to cut me down. Blame me. It's bittersweet. You're trying to cut me down. You want to watch me drown. Hey, what's up, Long Island? We are here with our newest show, newest addition to our Sunday lineup, Unger the Radar. That's Unger with a G. Welcome, guys. Again. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm your host, Randy Unger, and this is Unger the Radar. And I just want to thank uh, Jim Savali for engineering this wonderful gig. This is awesome. And, of course, uh, Evan Ginsberg, who... I've known for a while now and has given me a great opportunity to be not only on radio, but on TV as well. So it's been great um, working with him. And yeah, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to be. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to review some movies. We're going to have some a little discussion on horror and sci fi, see how it goes. Um, but yeah, right now I have like a panel, I guess. Um, Zainab, how are you? I'm doing good. How yeah. are you? Good, good, good. Thank you for having me. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, thank yeah, you for being sure. here. It's always a pleasure. And uh, Vinny the Guido, is that the proper term? Yep. I don't... Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. All righty. It's stereotypical, I know. <laughs> I know. Well, there's other terms yeah. for it, which I won't say. Most yet. people call me, uh, I can say it was before I was left curse on every show. My, yeah, I think that'll be okay. Yes, people call me a, a, a fucking asshole, <laughs> or they call me a dick, so... I'm used to those names too, but Vinny the Guido is sufficient in my opinion. See what I call him, I can't say here, so. By the way, kids, don't shut the laptop right now. Do not watch anyway. <laughs> and um, last This was... isn't your normal Sunday cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Nice. And then lastly, we have Karen Bernadello, a uh, fellow film critic. And um, Hi, also, Karen. Also, <laughs> also an expert in horror. So, yeah, I think we're going to have a it's fun. Experts in horror. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So. Um, basically, we, Karen and I, and you, we, we sent you uh, a movie to watch called The Gracefield yes. Incident, um, and it's a smaller film. It's like an indie horror. Um, is it a short film? Or no, no, no. I didn't, she, she watched it. I, I, she didn't tell me until today. I'm like, oh, okay. I well, 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 I wasn't supposed to say anything. Uh, I wasn't yeah. supposed to disclose anything. I okay, am it's fine. Husband. You should well, never hide anything. <laughs> well, no, nothing, mate. I mean, it's not, you know, national security. It's just a... <laughs> A low budget horror movie. Um, basically, it's about um, a, a bunch of couples. They go to a, a house in the woods and basically to get, you know, have a nice time. And a meteorite crashes nearby and 
uh, emerges as an alien that pretty much terrorizes them and ruins their weekend. Mm -hmm. So kind of like the science fiction version of Cabin Fever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking. Well, I was looking. Um, there was. I saw a bit of Twilight Zone, Evil Dead, Cabin in the Woods. Mm -hmm. I saw um, the Blair Witch Project. Yeah, because it's a found footage genre. Exactly. The original Blair Witch, or yeah, Witch, yeah. yeah. Found footage, guys. That's like um, it's a horror movie where it's like first person camera, shaky cam, like uh, Paranormal Activity, Blair Witch. And uh, Cloverfield, so yeah. it reminded me of a little bit of Cloverfield too. The first Paranormal Activity was great, but then yeah. after that, it started getting redundantly stupid. After that, yeah, uh, it was a bit much. What I was not a big fan of the other ones. The first one was the best one. Yeah, yeah, uh, first two or three maybe. What about Stranger Things? Even that too. Uh, anything that has to deal Dead, with, yeah. yeah, anything that has to deal with sci-fi. Crazy. Who? Unfriended. Unfriended, yeah, but Unfriended. that's not that takes place on <laughs> oh, Skype, yeah, not in the woods. Yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> okay. Carol, what, what did you think of the Gracefield incident? Um, I watched it like a few weeks ago, and um, I spoke with like the director. He was also like the main actor and writer mm -hmm. and everything. So it was kind of interesting to like hear what he had to say about like filming and kind of right. coming up with the story. And I thought it was like kind of interesting, like like the, just like the found footage aspect. I thought it was like because like one aspect was like he has a prosthetic eye, and like mm -hmm. the camera was like found footage through that like yeah. his point of view. So I thought that was interesting the way like. Yeah. Just describing how like they shot that aspect. So. Yeah, it was pretty. They shot it from the pr point of view of that prosthetic guy. Yeah. Kind of right. like, kind of like Unfriended was shot through the perspective of Skype. This was shot through the oh, perspective of the prosthetic guy. So. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, I like I like movies that basically are told from a different show from a different perspective, hmm. like an well, like an electronic or a social media account or a gadget. Mm -hmm. You know, it's innovative. Yeah, it's very innovative and it's real. Right, it's, it's better real. than remakes. Yeah, that's a good point. Now this is a very original movie. I like the original. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I like in independent stuff now because it's like it's mostly original stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's not like remakes or anything like that, and it's not too much CGI. Right. I don't know. I understand a little bit of CGI is okay, but when. When they use too much CGI, where yeah. it doesn't even look real, it's, it's like and they overdone. Like it. even in action movies with the explosions, it's like the, the CGI explosions. Like yeah. you can tell it's CGI. Like it's horrible. It ruins it's like, the film. It's like people have no. That's their. There's they're, no they're expecting to see the, an explosion. Yeah. They need constant stimulation, and it's a shame. There's no vision. It's like, there's no it's art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of that's why like independent films is so much better. Because yeah. It's like they they're bringing back the old school way of filming. Which yeah. To me, is much more okay. productive in my opinion. What have you seen lately that you that you recommend? Well, like I said, Unfriended was kind of like a low budget film, mm -hmm. so that, that that didn't really. I mean, it used very little. CGI I didn't catch that. Mostly. What is that? They they kill them through the computer? Or what? It's yeah, Skype. It's like through Skype. Through Skype. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's it really weird. Sounds like Rent the Ring. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like definitely basically watch it. it's cool. what's cool is it's better to watch it on the computer, so you get the real. <laughs> yes, that's yes. funny. So you get the real feel of it. Like if you get the DVD, pop it on your, your you know, pop it on your um, laptop. On your laptop right. Watch it on there. It's like, it makes it seem more real. So it's like a movie in a movie. Yeah, it's so weird, you know, but it's yeah. basically, you're going to get that feeling like as if though somebody is harassing you online, someone's threatening you online because someone's typing back to you. Right. You're going to get that exact feeling that it's gonna make your heart flutter okay. because what if was you're, your, what were your thoughts on this on, on the movie that that he showed you? I actually liked it. It was very very interesting. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there was a bit of the Twilight Zone, Evil Dead, um, mm -hmm. Cabin in the Woods, I, Stranger Things, yeah. and I loved how they kind of juxtaposed all of that together yeah. in one movie. The only thing I didn't like was the acting, which is so atrocious, <laughs> so yeah. cheesy. Yeah. Like he's a good filmmaker, Matthew Matthew Rath. Yeah. But as an actor, the main guy, he just didn't work. It was, you know, I've noticed that a lot of acting nowadays seems more real, not over dramatized. Mm. You know, I mean, it's just it it's on kind of watching. Yes, yeah. it kind, it's kind of like some people are so over dramatic, mm -hmm. and it's, but like if you go to, you know, if you go to like a theater, um, if people take a theater class or something, you know, or they're in the drama club, they overdo it. Mm -hmm. But. If people like us were in that situation in a cabin where yeah. we're being terrorized by an, <laughs> even by an alien, <laughs> how are we going to react? Well, we're the actors like that they used in it, though, like, were, were they, do you think they were experienced actors or do you Didn't think they were just anybody 
He just yeah. it, like these people didn't even go to acting school. No, he just picked, he just his picked them off the said, street. Like, yeah. the, way I, the way I see it is, see, I'm not an actress, but I believe acting is thinking. Mm. That's what it is. You want to you want to <laughs> live. You want to make the parts. You want to make whatever part you're doing. You want to make it seem as real and realistic yes. as yeah, possible. Yeah. And the only way to do that is to really study the part and actually like go every day like as if you're that character. Yeah, you got to do some research. And yeah, that's that's basically it. And kind of live the part a little bit. But that, but even in wrestling, it's like the, the same thing. It's the same concept. Like if you're going to be a character, try to study what it's what you know, so you can get it down pat right. and make it more believable. Right. But the same thing in, in, in acting. It's like the same thing. It's like. You got to make it seem more real. And now the thing is, I'm very, I'm very. Um, how do I say this without sounding like no, I am a dick. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. The thing yeah. Is. Like, <laughs> like I'm very picky. Mm -hmm. Like I, I to me, I like the '80s style and the '90s style of acting. You're, okay. When with the '60s and '70s, like even before that, there was some good movies, but there was very few. Most of them was like the acting was just like. It was overacting or yeah. underacting, and there was no in between back then. Okay. Where, I mean, there, there was times where it actually was on point, but that was very rare. I don't think it gets any better than the 1970s in terms of. Oh, yeah. I love cool. 1970s horror movies. I mm -hmm. love 1970s, but yeah. I do get his point because nowadays it's kind of like, yeah, exactly, it's overacting. Yeah. Nowadays people don't act like that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's a big contrast from back then. Back, you know, back in the seventies to now to this millennium. So you think the time period is it, it's evidence of what the acting style is? Yeah, it has a lot to do. With okay. I believe you don't think it's just like timeless and just flows and like time is irrelevant. No, because they, you know what it is. It's, it's like they didn't know any better now. back then. Back then, that was the end thing was the overacting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think it had anything to do. I, they were great actors and actresses, mm -hmm. but that was the end thing back then. So back then, overacting was. Was the way to you're, act. you're talking eighties or seventies? Seventies. Seventies acting. Okay. Yeah, like like overacting back then was very popular, and mm -hmm. that was actually that was the style back then. Right. I think if, if those actors and actresses if they studied the way things are done, like in the in the eighties and nineties, then they would have did that as well. Okay. Back then, overacting was a very popular way. That was the way of acting back then. Right. right. Okay. Like when they like when they overdid it with the drama, and I'm like, okay, this is a little too much. So, but <laughs> overacting know. in the seven, I think Al Pacino, Dog Day Afternoon, that comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it was amazing. I wouldn't was, consider yeah. over yeah. overacting. A just... Anything with William Shatner. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's nice. true though, but All it's right. like you know, but it's kind of like the old the the, the '80s and the '90s style of of horror movies was amazing mm. because there wasn't. The CGI quality. They used actual, like you know, models and stuff. Like yeah. they used actual. They used real explosions. They used real. They makeup. Used real makeup, and they used the, the blood looked more real. It wasn't yeah. CGI blood. It was like it looked more real. Authentic, yeah. Authentic, exactly. Yeah, like, horror movies say they were much more scarier back then. The originality has gone out the window. I think the seven, some of the seventies horror movies were excellent yeah. with, with that. With, yeah. and that's what I loved about that. The seventies was great for horror. Dawn of the Dead. Yes. Yes. The seventies was amazing for horror. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like I said, some of the films they didn't have overacting, mm -hmm. and and those are the ones I cherish the most because it had the quality of, you know, of the props, mm -hmm. but it also had the quality of the acting. You know, but but I'll tell you, like back then the graphics were like way better, and yeah. I, mean, I I just loved it better. It was yeah. more. It was more real. I hear you. Eighties. I'm a big Friday the Thirteenth fan. I don't know. Yeah, but you Halloween. know, I will point out one thing. I will say this in the 1974 Tales from the Crypt movie, which I love that movie. <laughs> love that, that movie. That was the Crypt Keeper before the Crypt Keeper. Well, movie. they yeah. had a movie before the, the show. Original Crypt yeah. Keeper. Yeah. Oh, okay. Skeleton. And I actually love this movie, but I will say what I did notice is that the blood looked like paint. It was oh, yeah. obvious. <laughs> it was paint, and it wasn't even red. It looked magenta. I think they. Paint. What did you think of the HBO version of? Tales from the Crypt. I like the Crypt Keeper. I, I thought <laughs> he, was adorable. Was he was adorable. He was more adorable. He was scary. Yeah, yeah, he was adorable. <laughs> than scary. He was more adorable than scary. Like he, yeah, he had that he sarcastic. Yeah, he yeah, was a good. And then you know they had yeah. a cartoon like a Saturday he morning it's adorable. cartoon. Yeah, he at it. <laughs> I honestly, I, I prefer um, Creep Show. I love Creep Show. Oh, I love one and two. Oh, one and two. Love Creep Show. 
Wow. I, there's also a third one. The third one's good too, but not as good. But, yeah, um, but not as good as the first two. I huh. loved Creepshow. Um, I loved. You know, the thing is, like, I I call it a horror because it was funny and it was <laughs> scary at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But um, like the first Creepshow. Okay. Um. <laughs> The first creep show was um, the monster coming out of the crate, the big, oh fat, that big hairy monster. I, for some reason, I thought hey. it was cute. <laughs> what you call me? <laughs> yeah, I think I thought it was cute for some That's reason. That's not funny. No way. <laughs> she calls me that shit. Man. <laughs> no. Not cool at all. Oh my but God. it was, but it was so like, but it was cute. It was funny. It was like, yeah. it was so unimaginatively cute. You and, know, yeah, creep show too though. Pretty freaky with the, the oil slick. Yeah, that oil slick. Yeah, that oil slick. That, that just ate people. That right, just right. Ate anybody who went. Oh, oh you're so quiet. Say something. Creep show two thoughts. What, what, what are your thoughts? Go on, jump in at any time. Listen, you don't have to. You could jump in at any moment. It's the, you know, go right ahead. Microphone's right there. You can just jump right in. Uh, you I are. I never actually uh, seen Creep show, so uh, I figured. Uh, uh, don't really have anything to say about okay. that. Okay. Well, it's one of those those horror anthologies, like four stories into one yeah. movie that he did. That's kind of like what her audio book oh, is about. Oh, nice segue. It's, it's a bunch <laughs> of different horror. It's a, it's a bunch of different horror uh, stories in one thing. So it's kind of like Stephen King's um, Cat's Eye. Eye. Cat's Eye. Oh, with Drew Barrymore. Yeah, and it had it had James three different Lester. stories right. in the one movie. Right. This is kind of like in that aspect also just like you know, okay so well, it's an also, aspect also also like you know you know talk about an anthology like trilogy of terror um except this is six stories you know not a trilogy yeah. but something six like stories that in one. and mm. i say you know like basically i like um just like you were mentioning old school um i, I love the old school style of writing and mm. you know of course acting as well but the old school style of writing the way stephen king writes richard matheson Okay. Um, oh, Richard Matheson is one of my favorite authors. Okay. So just like Stephen King. Now, didn't I remember in a past show I did with you? You said it's similar to the Alvin the, Schwartz. The children's Alvin Schwartz. scary stories to tell in the dark. Alvin Schwartz actually <laughs> inspired me to write that. Oh my gosh! Al, my, it was. My, <laughs> <laughs> there you go, folks. Yeah. Do you get it? <laughs> Alvin Schwartz You're inspired cool, me to write, do the audiobook part of it. Okay. But my own nightmares inspired me to write the stories. Have you ever met him, Al, Mr. Schwartz? Mr. Schwartz has been dead for a long okay, time. Okay, then. Oh, and that would be, no, I would have loved to. <laughs> that's really scary, yeah. I would have loved to. I mean, the audio, like, you know, the audio book part, like I said, Alvin Schwartz, he came out with the audio book version of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which scared the shit out of me. Yeah. I would play yeah. that. We would play that sleepovers. The minute we heard the music go off, we would all be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, and just jumping under the covers. So but I think she didn't know me then, because I would have made, I would have made it even worse. I remember, <laughs> da, 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 da. Like, oh, stop it, you asshole! Yeah, I would have been. She's lucky she didn't know me back then. But we were, been. yeah, well, we were little at the time. But and still. I think the, one of the worst, the most horrifying aspects of those books was the artwork. That the illustrations, believe it or not, he the, the books were banned for a while. Wow. I, from what I read. The in the United are banned States, because of, yeah, wow. because of the artwork. But they they've come back and now they come, came out with the they're doing the documentary. But cool, I want them to come out with the movie for this so bad. Oh, I really cannot wait. I will promote that like anything. I that would will, be great. I I so because I love scary stories to tell in the tell in the dark. I love Alvin Schwartz stories. I mean, he is one of my biggest inspirations for this book. Hmm. Jim, what's your what's your thought? Like, what's your favorite hour of horror? I like um. The seventies. Nice. Yeah. The seventies were scary, man. The first movie yeah, I ever was. saw was Night of the Living Dead. Uh, that was the best. I think that I was, was only I think Absolutely. I was only um maybe five years old. <laughs> my sisters traumatized me for life. One of my favorite and movies and it was of all time was horrifying. Night of the Dead. It was horrifying. Great. Classic. Absolutely. It Absolutely. just seemed so real because there was nothing, no special anything. Yeah. I know. It was like someone was in the room with you filming it. <laughs> they it was great. That too? They did. That's, that's, I hate it when they a do a bunch of sequels. Yeah, they you did. Know, Walking Dead is obviously sequels. inspired. Did anybody remake it? Remake it? No. Um, yes, they remade it in 1990, which yeah. is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, at least it was in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, no, it was really good. If too. they did it now, it would be a travesty. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they did. They remade um, Dawn of the Dead, not too like 2004. And Shaun of the Dead, the parody. Shaun of, Shaun the, of Dead. the Dead, awesome. Now, that was a comedy. That was a parody comedy. Satire, know? yeah. Satire. It, it was great. Though. That's like scary movie where they're making fun of <laughs> Not that bad. No, okay. I mean, come on. You want to comedies? You want to? Okay. How about this? How is this for like 
the, the one of the most funniest movies of this time. Of, the remake of Karen. That, that is a fun I movie. I didn't want to see that. The <laughs> bad, the bad, <laughs> that was the worst. Uh, no, no, the bad, and, the bad acting, bad. the bad acting, the bad timing. Well, she's good. What's her? Uh, Chloe, Chloe Moret, uh, Grace, Moretz. Grace Moretz. Yeah. But she's better in comedy. It's hard. She doesn't belong in it. No, she did not. I, I did not like her in the new Carrie. I'll only watch I love her as a comedian, but yeah. as, as, a, as a horror actress. Yeah, yeah. She was good in neighbor, Neighbors too, right? Yeah. I like. I, I mean, the thing is, I'll only watch it just to see how bad the whole movie is for entertainment purposes. <laughs> Julianne Moore is the only person that actually played the part she, no, well. No, but she had the attitude. Even that wasn't that great, but, it was, but she was like the best actress in the but movie. she overacted and also. And she you know overacted what? too. I mean, like I said, yeah. hey, listen, she, she was well, the, the material, in the yeah. movie, but again, it wasn't all that great. Yeah. So. No, but the problem, this is the thing. The problem I have I had with that movie is that in this era of social media, text messaging, MySpace, Facebook, whatever, yeah. Skype, whatever it is, you know, in this era, nobody is going to believe that a teenage girl does not know what her first friggin' period is. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was just back in the 70s when things were a little bit more conservative, people might have actually believed that, that okay. someone can be that sheltered and that, you know, but... They tried to recreate that. Yeah. Now oh, it was yeah. just, it was just two totally different, it was so contrasting, it was, mm -hmm. it was horrible, like apples and oranges, and even huh. that, you know, goes a little bit better. Carrie, um, um, Karen, Karen, Karen. <laughs> <There you> <laughs> um... Well, like I met Julianne Moore a few times, and it oh, was like, did? yeah, it was she, like she's she, sweet as yeah, she's so yeah, sweet. She was yeah. really nice, and uh, she's actually the person I've inter like met interviewed the most, like since I started like doing like mm. interviewing and everything. And, actress yeah, and, and um, yeah, awesome. like I met her around the time that Carrie was coming out, and she was like kind of talking about how like she was really interested in like going back and doing like a horror movie, kind of doing like a change huh. of pace and. So I thought that that was interesting, but I kind of agree. It wasn't like nothing compares to the original ones. So. I like hmm. I liked Julianne Moore when she played in that movie. What was it with the? I think it was. Uh, Big Lebowski. No, St no, Steve, no, no, was it Steve Carell was in it? Uh, oh, oh, oh! oh crazy stupid love. Yes, yes, crazy yes. stupid love. That's she a good one. That. that was a really good movie. It's great. Not a horror movie, but it was a good movie. Yes, yeah, she's a good actor. I thought that was a really good movie. And she won the Oscar for Still Alice, playing a woman with Alzheimer's. Yeah, oh, she was excellent. That man. was deep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Okay, what what um what else have you guys seen lately that yeah that stuck out? Pornography. No wait. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Kids, turn the channel. No, we really do watch it, but <laughs> you know what movie I like from the seventies? I like Kathy's Curse. Mm. Didn't see that one. They either yeah came out in the late seventies or early eighties, but yeah. Okay. Kathy's Curse, you should definitely see that. Okay, what year? Um, I, I believe it's 1977, I think, okay. or early 80s. I'm, I got my... I liked um, Black Christmas. That was pretty good. Black Christmas, yeah. yeah. But... Margot Kidder. Mar I love Margot Kidder, even though she's got a lot of her own issues. issues <laughs> I love her as a horror actress. What about Margot Robbie? <laughs> <laughs> what about her? <laughs> she... Well, I'll tell you... She she she's a great actress, don't get me wrong, but she was no Harley Quinn, okay? Harley <laughs> Quinn was was the like she wore the, the, the Jester yeah. outfit and all that stuff. Yeah. She looked nothing like that. I they kind of, they made it they move they made it like you know di easily digestible to movie goers. Yeah. Like people who haven't seen Batman the animated series or the comic books. Yeah. But uh, she was definitely no Harley Quinn though. I mean I think she had the accent down. She did have the accent down, but was... still like I, she just the, the the like she didn't do the jester thing. Like I was looking forward to seeing that and when I saw that I'm like, that's yeah. Harley Quinn. I like I mean, her. she's hot as hell. Don't yeah. get me wrong, that's great. That's the price worth the price of admission alone. <laughs> I'm like yeah. she's no Harley Quinn. But I my favorite movie of all time and it's still my favorite is Cat's Eye. Okay. Stephen King's Cat's Eye because I don't know, just something about that movie that I liked. And Isn't there there's like a a small like hero, like a mouse or something, attacking a troll in the end? It was the troll. There's a lot of cat and a, cat. In that movie. a troll and a cat. Yeah. Yes. The troll, troll and the cat. cat. That was like that. That was the last story of the three stories. Right. Right. Yeah. But what I but what I truly like enjoyed was seeing all the cameos of Stephen King stuff. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Like Cujo. Like Christine. Cujo was in it, yep. And you know, the Cujo, car was in it. Cujo, oh, uh, Christine? Yeah, Christine yes. was in it, yeah. I wasn't impressed by Cujo. I saw like maybe two years ago. Cujo, 
I thought, you know, Kujo, I don't know. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It's just a woman in a car being terrorized by a dog. Yeah. But, you it's know, not interesting. The really. dog was yeah. rabid, but the dog also had a certain instinct. And in it's like he just knew things. Okay. You know, dogs know things about people. Cujo just. So somehow you're saying the, girl, the, the woman was evil? Because she uh-huh. was an adulteress. She was an adulteress. Oh, and he sensed it. He sensed that she was oh, a dirty got- whore. Oh, <laughs> dirty <laughs> whore. So he was All right. trying to terrorize a dog her and make her pay. Dirty whores, that yeah, pretty much exactly. Yeah, you, you hit the nail right on the head. Could have stopped at a lot of houses. Jimbo, right you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. Like he, it's he an interesting killed, uh, he observation. Killed people that were, he killed people that were morally bankrupt. Okay. Oh. So I kind of so basically, you knew that Cujo had a sixth sense. You know. Wait, he did he knew. kill other? Did the dog kill other people too? He killed people that were nearby that were assholes. On the oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. Speaking, right. of, speaking of nudity. <laughs> she uh, she interviewed uh, Stormy uh, Maya Alvarado. Yeah, from... she she was she's an international Playboy um, model, nice. model, and, oh. and she's also nice. a regular model. And she and and more importantly, she's now a screen queen. Oh she's wow! Done a couple of good movies, okay. and she yeah, she, and she's also a producer now and everything. So she's really talented. So you interviewed her for for my blog, for your blog, and okay? For the Nightmare Dark uh, Horror blog, but um, she also has the movie Playing with Dolls. She's Have very it. smart. She's yeah, very smart. And she's a, she Knows has her, her movie It Hungers. She has her movie It Hungers. It Hungers. Yes. Yeah, she's like a, she she believes like the older way of movies and stuff like okay. that. She she's just like us. She doesn't like uh, see too much CGI or yeah, you know, yeah. CGI. She likes good she likes, movies. She likes <laughs> good movies, and she you know she's very she's very she's very smart. She's a very gr- good actress, and what? she and she's a very hot model. So <laughs> killed. She, uh, she's like everything that you want in a horror movie. <laughs> that's awesome. What was the name yeah. again? Um, her movie is pl- the movie playing with dolls havoc. Mm-hmm. Actually, let me. I'm going to tell you about that movie playing with dolls havoc. It is. I mean, like, uh, you you will feel it. The guy is a maniacal killer. Mm. And, I mean, you just literally feel how brutally he murders people in the movie. Is is he like a Leatherface type? Or? I think, to be honest, he might be a little bit worse than Leatherface. Oh, it's maybe Ooh. like more Norman Bates type. It's he, very gory. It's yeah. very, very, it's just like, I, I literally felt it. I felt it in every, you know, I felt like my intestines getting ripped out. I felt my spinal cord getting ripped out. I mean, I don't All know. Right. Yeah, for anyone who's listening, I mean, look up Stormy Maya Alvarado. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, Stormy Check it out. Alvarado. Yeah. You know. Stormy. She, Stormy Maya Alvarado. It's I, not Y, yeah, yeah. at the end. Maya Stormy Alvarado. Alvarado. Uh, or just put Stormy Alvarado. I'm sure it'll pull. Or Stormy up. Maya. Yeah. Or Stormy Maya. Maya Alvarado? Yeah. Her? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. He's like, bingo! <laughs> okay. Oh, that's her? I don't know. She's, I don't know if you can see she's that. She's a good but... looking blonde. That's all yeah. you need to know. <laughs> Just look it up. Spell yeah. it again. Let them look it up themselves. Right, right. <laughs> um, okay, I'll send that link out on yeah, yeah. Facebook later. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, she's very, she's very talented though. Okay, she really is. Cool. It's not just you know like she, and it's good because, I mean, that that's it's, it, let's face it. I mean, you know that's gonna sell any movie. People will watch it just just because she's hot, yeah. and they find out how talented she is on top of. Nice. Looking that good, I yeah. mean that that's like a win win for her, you that's know. That's a good point. And the, you have people who are jealous, you know, they of course Of course they're gonna hate on her, you know. But any, anybody who's successful is gonna have haters too. So that's for just you know comes just to the, the way territory. It is. Yeah, yeah, you know, but she I, I mean, she's very much like me. Like we just let it go over our heads. People mm-hmm. are gonna hate. That's that's mm-hmm. at least you know you're doing something right. If people are gonna, you know, get jealous and be haters like that. Yeah. You know, they're they're your number one fans. They're the ones that are gonna pay attention to more than the people who actually like you actually. So it's Yeah. Comes with the turf. It does. Yeah, it's crazy. But I don't yeah. like the more, yeah. the more exposure you get, the more people. And I like... remember my fiance when she when she when she first when I asked her a long a long time ago. I said, "Honey, what?" I said, "What do you? What did you always want to be when you grew up? Like, what? What? Like, what? What is your dream? What did you always want to do? What do you want to do?" Mm-hmm. And she goes, "Well, I always wanted to be a writer." I'm like, well, "How come you don't do it?" No, oh, I don't know. She's like, uh, "It's not. So I don't know too many people, and I'm afraid to be." I'm like. If that's what you want to do, do it. Mm-hmm. She's like, but other people probably, you know, I'm like, listen, I don't care what people have said to you. 
if they tell you that you shouldn't do it and they try to put you down, that's more of a reason to do it. You right. want to prove them wrong. So you have my full support. Do what you love to do, and I will support you fully. Oh. <laughs> and she did it, and now she's – Here we are. <laughs> do you know she's one of the top 100 horror bloggers in the world? I she just won. I'm not surprised. <laughs> she finished in the 98th place out of the top 100. And there's thousands and thousands of horror blogs in the world. She's the top 100 in the world. Do they have like conventions strictly for horror writing? And yeah, they, they do. do. They do. Um, and I've been meaning to go to one just, you know, every time. Everybody keeps saying she should go. You know, yeah. It's, it's just been, we've been so booked and everything. But Even though I hate conventions, but conventions. I think if it's going to benefit her, why not? Or like they've got events. Barn Barnes and Noble has events. Like we can yeah. meet and greet with um, authors. Yeah. If you if there's an author, horror author there that is doing an appearance, you could pick their brain and would, maybe collaborate. I would. I yeah. want to collaborate with horror writers, um, filmmakers. I'm just so producers. proud of that she made the top 100 in in, in the world. Yeah, it was yeah. so funny because he horror goes, blogs. I mean, that's this. That, like I said, there's thousands and thousands of horror blogs out there. For her to finish in the top 100 and get an award for that. She didn't even know I'm the one that broke the news. To He's her. like, oh, by the way, I come down. I go. I come downstairs. He's like, congratulations, by the way. And I'm like, yeah, for what? Congratulations <laughs> for what? He's like, she thought I was made... gonna say something vulgar too. Like, <laughs> yeah. She was waiting for that, but I'm like, He's what like, was the award? He the for the top 100 oh, uh, just, bloggers right. of, horror around the world. the world. Oh, okay. So he's like, you won an award for one of the top 100 horror bloggers in the world. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. I was like, she thought I was kidding. At first. I was like, like, what? Nothing vulgar? She's like, <laughs> I was like, nothing vulgar. I'm like, are you making this up? You know? And he's like, then he showed it to me, and I'm like, when I saw my name on the, you know, I, I saw my name down the list on the, you know, ninety. And the award is listed on her website too. She put up the thing, top one hundred horror blogs. Nice. In the world, so. Did they yeah. give you like a plaque or something? No, Not no a plaque. Just, just, uh, yeah. just online, they gave us. They gave okay. us just they put the only HTML the people code. that are finishing the top one hundred could put it on their website. So. I like it. So the HTML code, you just have to put that on your website. Yeah, they give it to you. That's so, impressive. Right that's there, so. honestly, that's like. I'll tell you something. Inside, I was very proud. I'm very proud of her. Inside, I was trying not to get very emotional. Because but she that was a big honor. Right. That was so a big as I honor. told her, she should do what she loves doing. It proved me right that screw all the haters, do what you love to right, do, and you right. will be successful. Well, you know the it's thing great. is also you. This is not this. This is not a hobby. This is a career. It's, this it's is a, a full time job. Yeah. Treat it as a. I said if you're gonna. Yep. Yeah, I told her. I said, but I will support you with your dream. But you have to listen to me. I said. You got to treat this as a business, not a hobby. Yeah. If you're doing it for a hobby, then don't waste your time or money. If you're treating it, I was like, you got to go full force with this. You got to be professional as all hell. Right. And I said, you got to you got to treat this as a business and don't say yes to everybody. Mm. Wow. Inspirational. <laughs> Very so, inspirational. Yeah. Just your, your coach is in the corner right here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I coach her, my publicist. I handle her media relations and publicist oh, stuff. Oh. So. Okay. Awesome. My publicist, yeah. my my rep, you know. <laughs> Your manager. Pain in my ass. Yeah. Town, yeah. Pain in my well, ass. Well, no, no, she, hand, she handles the scheduling because I'll, I'll, I'll fuck that up. In a <laughs> she handles that. I handle too, the so. admin work. The admin yeah. work. But everyone's like, oh, well, you know, you know, well, it's on this date. I was like, you know what? Work that out with my fiance. She handles the dates department because I, I, you tell me, I'll say, yeah, but chances are I might not show up because I'll forget. So yeah. you got to, like, collaborate with her with the dates and shit. Yeah. So. But you meet the actual, like, yeah. the, the publicist and stuff like that. Oh, I'll fuck up my own wet dreams sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but, but when it comes to scheduling, like, I'm horrible with that. But okay. everything else, like, I'm, I'm like, hands-on, 100% professional. This That's is right. me. This is what people expect my personality to be. So this is how I am off camera. I'm completely different <laughs> sometimes because sometimes I'm eating this. And now you're also an actor, right? I do. Oh, well, yeah. Well, taking time away from all that stuff, too. Uh, from I'm taking time away from pro wrestling. I'm taking time away from the acting and all that stuff. I'm trying to spend more. Now that my kids are teenagers, I'm spending more time with them now. Wow. So, you know, I can do more things with them now that they're teenagers, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it's, it's great that I get to get away from that mm -hmm. life. And now I get to enjoy being the normal everyday Joe again. Nice. It's like it's, it's kind of a nice feeling to, to go back to that, you know. Okay. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I do acting, stand up comedy, pro wrestling, you know, like my, you know, heel manager on the independent scene and stuff. But. Cool. You got like a Joe Rogan thing going on, I think. <laughs> oh, you mean with the flotation therapy and stuff? No, just your. Oh, in, oh, in general. Yeah, in general. Oh, yeah. Well, your being. 
Well, Joe, believe funny you mentioned Joe Rogan. He actually talked about flotation therapy all the time on his podcast. At, at, at Evan's show, though. Yeah, yeah well, dude, that, that I'm t- it changed our lives completely. It completely <laughs> changed our lives. I did okay. a complete 180 with my life. Okay. Meditation and everything is like, it, it just changed our lives. And flotation therapy is like, that's like meditation on steroids. It's like the greatest form of wow. meditation there is. Okay. But it, it's very, it's good because ever since I've been doing it, I've been in less, I, I'm not in physical pain anymore because wow. of it. Like, no physical pain at all. It's all gone. Like, I just don't understand it. Like, it's just gone. It's better than medicine. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. I don't need pain medicine anymore. It's great. Came in thinking we were talking about movies and uh, flotation uh, therapy. Okay, cool. Well, her and I want to actually, believe it or not, we actually want to open up our own flotation center eventually. Do you have a name for it? Yeah, the moment of of zen. (laughs) Yeah, moment of zen. Oh, okay. I was going to think something like flotation related. No, because a lot of people do that, and I don't want it to get confused with other ones. The aqua club. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> I, you'd be surprised. A lot of the names, and I don't want to be I, just in case. I don't want to have another name as somebody else or whatever. Yeah. I figured the moment of Zen. That's is a good perfect. one. But moment of Zen flotation. It center. seems like I've, I may, may have heard that in some variation though, like well, a yeah, spa. Well, well, a lot of people say that they always say like the you know they, there's a saying like the oh here's your moment of Zen. Okay. And blah blah blah. But really, it's you don't hear that in, as far as like stores go. Okay. You know? so, Where were they? It would be on uh, Long Island. Probably we'll start out on Long Island, but eventually, if it grows rapidly, I'd like to make it a franchise eventually. But cool. the process is very long. I mean, it's going to take at least two years for us to get this thing going if we if we plan on doing it. Because gotcha. you got to get the licensing and all that other stuff. But mm. it's great because, especially for you know, for anybody who who does like car writing or or any writing at all, like anybody who's creative and and and. Like, believe it or not, the flotation tank is actually good because it helps you focus more on what you need to do. It helps mm. you make better decisions. It helps you be more creative when it comes to writing stories and stuff like that. Okay. It's helped inspire her as well. So, right, love? Wow. Mm-hmm. So it's not just physical. It's also it's mental. mental. It's more mental than physical even. That's actually. awesome. I mean, it's great. it has great physical benefits, but the mental benefits is even far better. Yeah. I just did a Pilates the other night. And it's pretty. Yeah. It reminds me, like, you know. The whole body no, mind. Man, Pilates, man. Yeah. yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, you should try meditation balls too. Like, get one of those group people and, and do like meditation, and then you start off doing it by yourself at times. Too. Yeah, you know I don't have I mean? the patience though for meditate. It's you know what, it, but neither did I. Yeah, and now I do. <laughs> okay. So it's if I could do it, bro, you could definitely <laughs> do it. Like for me, I was I don't understand. Like I was I was never thought in a million years that this would be me. Okay. So wow. it, it's it's really weird how much it made me change my life completely 180, and it's helped her too. And, and like I said, it's helping her more creatively also. Like she's thinking of new. She's always coming to me after floating. She's like, "Oh, honey, I have this great idea." And blah blah blah. Uh, That's great. You know? Wow. So yeah, I thought about it in the tank. I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> wow. Can you do this anywhere? Do you like need any equipment or just a well, pool? Well, you have to go to float centers to do it unless you buy your own flotation tank, which okay. get expensive. Hmm. But, but they they you know. Mm-hmm. You can get it. The cheapest float tank in the world is three thousand dollars, including Epsom salts and everything. It's like oh, a package geez, deal. The whole thing. But yeah, but it, it's pretty good though. But I mean, it has a lot to do with heart. It has a lot to do with acting. It has a lot to do with. It has a lot to do with all that stuff. And, okay. You know, and she wants to eventually come out with a part two to her. Uh, you cool. know, right? Yeah. 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 It's your thing. You, you talk about that. So yeah. um. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, once, you know, I actually would like to make this into a movie. I want to work with producers and uh, directors and everything. So hmm. probably going to start doing that in the fall. Do you, are, are you familiar with um, Trauma? You know, the Toxic Avenger, Lloyd Kaufman? I don't really, I don't think so. I don't uh, really follow. Back in the 70s and 80s, they had um, a movie called The Toxic Avenger. About a, it's a bit, basically about a nerdy kid who gets bullied a lot. And then he accidentally falls into some toxic waste. And then after that becomes this buffed superhero and he t- gets revenge on those who bullied him. And it, it sounds like that's that. I mean, I, I, I know Lloyd Kaufman, like I've met him and that'd be a good connection. I think I wouldn't mind. That yeah. Either. You know yeah. what he's talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't seen that one. But, <laughs> but you, you don't know Lloyd Kaufman? Yeah, I've heard of him. Trauma. What was your favorite generation? Like what, what? Error, like, you know, at the 10 year radius between 70s, 80s, 90s, now, whatever. Um, like, what was your favorite genre? Like, what are your favorite movies? I do like a lot of like horror stuff, and like my website, we really started off with like horror, and now we kind of do everything. So, um, probably like 70s and 80s, like, um, probably like, 
I didn't say, like, yeah, that one, and, like, Texas Chainsaw I really like, mm-hmm. so I was never really a fan of, like, Friday the 13th, but, hmm. more, like, a lot of the, like... Freddy vs. Jason, that, that was more like a comedy than... Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a goof, total goof. Uh, I was hysterical. Yeah. It was more funnier than horror. <laughs> really. but, yeah, I wasn't into that one. After Jason X, I kind of gave up. I mean, I was into it only for the comedy aspect. But, yeah. I mean, that wasn't a scary movie by far at right. all, but, I mean, if you're... I mean, I was disappointed that it wasn't that there wasn't enough horror into it. It was yeah. more comedy, but at the same time, I enjoyed the comedy aspect. So, nice. but what did you did you like Freddy vs. Jason or no? I so, actually saw that one like when it came out. Like I saw it in the theater, like when I was in high school, and yeah. I was like, okay, this sounds interesting. So, like I went and saw it like in the theater, but I didn't think it was like like you said, it wasn't really anything like spectacular. But yeah. I thought it was interesting how they like combined like the two together. So. Cool. Yeah. Hey, Karen, we actually have to uh, review some other movies, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to plug your websites. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, VillageConnectionRadio.com. The Nightmare Nook guys. Six... www.nightmarenookhorrorblog.com. Yeah. And check out my store, the Nightmare Nook store.com. There you go. And yeah, <laughs> go back to let's review the rest of the movies. Yeah. Oh, uh, but do you have any in the book? Other than the floating? No. Nah. Um, if anybody is looking to book Tottenham Town for their conventions or whatever it is, it's uh, top of the line talentbookings dot com. So nice, cool. Thanks, yeah. guys. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Karen. So we've got just a couple of more, more minutes. We've got okay. We did uh, Gracefield Incident. It's okay, right? <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. too great, you know. Yeah. Like like I mentioned before, I interviewed the director, so yeah. Like I like talking to him about it, but. Like, once I, like, really watched the movie, I'm like, wasn't anything great, but, like, yeah. it was pretty nice. So yeah, I'm it was like, super nice. Yeah, yeah. So Cool. I didn't, like, review the movie, like, online or anything. Like, I didn't write anything. I just, like, posted, like, the interview. But, yeah. yeah, so, like, he was nice about it. So, like, it was interesting to hear, like, his experiences and yeah. kind of, like, casting. And, he, like, he mentioned, like, they didn't have much time to really rehearse. So, that, like, when you guys were talking about, like, the acting earlier. So, mm-hmm. yeah. that made me think of that. But, overall, it was, like... I think it was like a good like like one of his first films. So, yeah, yeah. It's a good yeah effort actually. Um, yeah, just that acting it really yeah. got to me. It was so bad. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, so should I see it or shouldn't I see it? Uh, eh, if you're if you're interested. Well, I mean, I mean, did that, you like that, the, that? Might be entertaining for me. Just to maybe how horrible the acting is. Maybe you know. If you like the style the of then. Cloverfield, did you see Cloverfield? Yeah. It's like that, but not as not as nice, not as glossy. Yeah. As professionally well, the field was done professionally. Too, yeah. So, so, you know. so it's, but, you know. yes, yeah, it's, it's not worth your time. But, <laughs> but sometimes I like cracking jokes at how horrible acting is sometimes. It's, All right. To me, that's entertaining. That's funny. The, you know, it, it, it's fun. It's like I get to pick a part. Like, yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that was bad. Yeah. You know, like shit like that. Like, it's more like, entertaining I'm, than the movie itself. Listen, I'm the kind of asshole who will drive really slow and fast and just to piss people off behind me. So. <laughs> If you can understand that mentality, then that's it. So. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, yeah, the um, look on their face is priceless. It's great. They get, they get so mad as they go, when they finally pass you. They're yeah. like giving me the finger, and I smile and wave like the president like this. <laughs> the nicer you are, the more it pisses them off. It's great. Nice. Yeah. Hey, all right, next movie, Karen. Um, Atomic Blonde. Did you guys see it, by the way? Atomic yeah, Blonde? It sounds like a pornography. It's not. <laughs> well, it's got some racy elements to it, but uh, mm. yeah. What did you think of? Yeah, so um, I saw the movie last week, and I ended up reviewing it. We're at the it, same so, screen. Yeah, yeah. So um, I w- going into it, like, I wasn't sure how it was going to be. I was kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to like it too much. But, <laughs> did I have you any yeah. sex scenes? Yeah, like a couple. So. A little bit. My kind of movie. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, so, like, with, like, Charlie Starin, like, was in a couple, like, of the racier scenes. Lesbian. Stuff. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really so. like this then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So like it wasn't bad. Yeah. <laughs> I bet it wasn't. <laughs> Did you like the action? She's blushing. Look at her. No. <laughs> I'm blushing too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, the action I thought was pretty interesting. Like the story wasn't really like that great, but like it was really like all action and mm-hmm. kind of like halfway through, like I kind of really like thought about like who like. 
the villain was. It's kind of like they try to lead you right, in like, right. different directions. And no spoilers, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I thought like her and James McAvoy had like a good, like interesting, like kind of dynamic between them. So. It's interesting, like his scenes as well. So, yeah. how did the ending go? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm with you. The chemistry, <laughs> the chemistry between McAvoy and Theron was really, really good. Some of the best fight sequences I've seen in a while. The, I like James McAvoy. Yeah, he's great. Loved him in Split. I didn't. I still have to see Split. Yeah. That one was a good. Split one. was yeah. actually, and I thought that was going to suck because like, that was actually pretty good. Yeah. I mean. I like the the first movie, Unbreakable, because mm -hmm. this Split, believe it or not, some may not know this, but Split is part two to the movie Unbreakable. Is it? I didn't. Is it? Yeah, they kind of like reveal it it's at the end. Like, oh, it connects, that's cool. So. It's part, two, but some people who never seen Unbreakable wouldn't wouldn't like if you never seen Unbreakable before. If you watch the end, some people like they'll know. It must mean something, but they might not know what it is. Well, that's they never mention. That's anything, uh, Shyamalan. You know? That's what he's all about. Like, it's more like so a cameo mention, mm. yeah. but they never actually say. All right, you know, it's 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 actually it's cool, but and it's weird because if you watch the movie, it's like nothing like Unbreakable, but mm. then you see how it joins together at the end. Mm. So it's actually part two to Unbreakable, and then they're gonna come out with a third movie, which really? is gonna be like the continuation. Of Unbreakable. Oh, that's cool. So technically, part three is really so would this after be, Unbreakable. So it's would like, this be like a superhero type trilogy? Because I know Unbreakable delved into yeah. superhero. But in Split, it has nothing to do with Unbreakable. Mm. But it, like, the yeah, part three, is, part no three spoilers. Is, <laughs> no, no, part no. three is supposed to be like it's supposed to be a continuation of part one. Okay. Okay. Cool. Like I, when I was watching Split, like I thought, like you could see Split with that scene Unbreakable. Like I've seen both of them, but I thought it was interesting. Like, what did you like better, Unbreakable, or did you like Split better? I wasn't crazy about Unbreakable. I, I kind of like it, it had dragging moments. Yeah. It did have dragging moments, but I liked the story and the plot. That's yeah. what I liked about yeah. it. But it had its dragging moments. But if you paid attention to the, to the plot mm -hmm. and, and, and the story and everything, it made sense. It just dragged. Okay. But. Split was just, it was, it, to me, it was great. And I thought, I was shocked because I honestly thought it was going to suck ass. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was No, it was great. I really yeah. Yeah. It's but weird, right? you were saying, though, that chemistry between James McAvoy and Charlie Stone yeah. was awesome. Uh, that, I like chemistry in movies. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Time. She's very cold and cool and collected. She's an assassin, like a, a spy. Sassy. Kind yeah, of yeah. Thing. And he's like this kind of loosey goosey, like drinker. But he's, all, he's good at his job. He's also a spy. Right. So it's kind of like opposites, and the combination of both of them on screen was really, really good. I thought it was interesting too, like how they like set it in like the eighties, like you don't yeah. really see too much of like in like. I also like the soundtrack, like, right, all, these, like yes. all the songs they did from like included from the eighties, and like they found oh, yeah. everything There's, like the songs perfectly mixed, yes. mixed yeah, yeah. Um, like mixed with the in, visuals. Yeah, it um it took place during the fall of the Berlin Wall, so like late eighties. Yeah, yeah, I think it was like eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. Um, okay, we got a couple more movies. Uh, next one, um, I don't know if you guys saw Person to Person. I don't think so. I don't think it's come out yet, but um, it's really, really good. It's about a group of New Yorkers, different stories, um, fall in love, there's like crime, and basically it's about how all their lives uh, intersect uh, throughout the course of the movie. It's very Woody Allen, it feels like, like all of these characters kind of interconnecting. Yeah. But um, what did you think of it? Um, I like I saw it because like I knew we were gonna talk about it today. Like I wasn't planning on seeing it otherwise because it's like kind of more like a straight drama. So it's like my site does a lot of like genre like um horror and everything. Mm -hmm. So like it was okay. It wasn't like something that I would have normally watched on my own. Like I thought it was kind of it's okay. Like, say how you feel. It was okay. Give the, <laughs> the person there. Don't make you feel. Let it all out. <laughs> it fucking sucked, damn it. <laughs> There you go. Does this speak how you feel? <laughs> Don't be shy. Uh, so, not a fan or? Not really, no. Nah. Not on your radar? <laughs> really not, <nah, nah. laughs> Under the radar. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Pun intended. Yes. <laughs> I just thought, like, the characters and, like, the storyline was kind of stuff we've seen before in, like, in the dramas and. Right, Nothing right. really like special or anything, so. Yeah. Other than that, though, was it okay or? 
It was okay. It was like kind of like things get repeated all the time in movies nowadays. So it wasn't like the best thing I've ever seen. I think like. It'll have its audience, like people who are like that kind of like, niche. Yeah, yeah. Niche. yeah. I was a big fan of it. I really enjoyed it. Like it had a nice flow to it. The acting was really good by people, actors I haven't seen before. Um, Benny Cooper Smith, I think that's from that. Benny or Bean? Benny Cooper Smith. Did you just say Bean? Bean. <laughs> Probably not Bean, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Otherwise, I would have had a field day making fun of him. Yeah. <laughs> but no, Benny's Cooper Smith, awesome. He's the like the hippie with the vinyl, yeah. the record. This guy, he's trying to, he gets sold a record, and it's like the wrong one or something, and there's this issue with it. The guy ripped him off, and then he just spends the rest of the movie trying to chase down this thief, this con artist. But uh, Benny Cooper Smith was really, <laughs> he was really good in that. And the young girl, uh, Tavi Gevinson. Yeah, I but, thought she was probably like the best one at all. Yeah. Like the only person I knew like was Michael Sarah, but I didn't know anyone else in the right. movie. Um but I thought she was really good. Like she yeah. was probably like the most memorable. Yeah, like in very my opinion. like short hair, very yeah. sarcastic. She kinda reminds me a little ass. like of Michelle Williams with like really short hair, like yeah. the look of it. So. But more sassy, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> yeah. But um cool. yeah, those two I, I and actually I like Michael Sarah in this. Yeah. I've never really liked a Michael Sarah movie. Mm-hmm. Only his TV work, you know, Arrest Development. But this movie, like, it made me appreciate him. It's like, he's not bad at acting. He's a decent actor. Yeah. yeah, I met him a few years ago. He was kind of interesting in person. So oh, cool. He's kind of, like, quirky, quirky, you know, like, yeah. unique, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Was he nice? Yeah. So. Cool. Is he different off camera than he is on camera? Or would you say Pretty much same? what you would expect. Oh, is- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the same kind of thing, personality, so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. And Abby Jacobson was also in it. She's, I think she's a comedian on uh, Broad City, which I haven't seen. But what are the stars that you met? Um, I would probably say like the one I was most excited was about was um, Matt Damon. Oh, I bet you were. Yeah, yeah. You meet some Matt Damon. That's right. Yeah. Uh huh. So I was excited about that. That was at Comic Con here like last year. So Rounders, baby. Love that movie. Classic. (laughs) Yes. John Malkovich is great in that too. What's the one where the two brothers are conjoined? Tim uh, and Michael. Stuck <laughs> Greg, he's stuck on you. Stuck on you. Stuck on you. <laughs> <laughs> what of the worst movies ever. So, made. how was he? How was meeting him? He was really nice. So it was like at the garden. So it was like backstage. So it was like, it was like a press conference. And nice. Yeah. 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 Backstage yeah. lucky dude. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's good. So I'm like, awesome. okay. That's what I wanted to do most. Like, at anyone. He was the one I wanted to meet the most. So, like, yeah. <laughs> Is he your favorite actor? Yeah. Nice. What about you? Like who have I met? Yeah, I know, uh, met, I know you must have met a lot. Too. Yeah, some of the bigger names maybe um, Liam Neeson. Oh. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. We were at the same. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved Liam Neeson. See, they have these things called roundtables where it's like five journalists and the actor just taking turns shooting them questions and interviewing them. So they get blindsided by certain questions. Sometimes, <laughs> but no, it's pretty. It's for some that really <laughs> shit out of left field. Like, hey, some, eh, not really, but um, show you on TMZ. Uh. <laughs> uh, Jude Law, Marissa Tomei, Sam Rockwell, oh, wow. Uh, wow. Simon Pegg, and Nick Frost. Marissa Tomei too. Wow. Yeah, she was super nice. Oh yeah, I would love to meet Marissa Tomei. Yeah, I cool. heard she was nice. I never got to meet her. Though. Yeah, but those are just a couple. Um, yeah, oh, and I know I, you meant more than that. <laughs> oh yeah, but those are like the biggest, yeah. the bigger ones. Yeah, um, I met Tim Burton. He was pretty cool. Really? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was poor wow. person too. I met him a few years. Did you? Wow. For, uh, big eyes. Big eyes. Yeah, yes, so. at the junk at the yeah. press conference. Yeah. And I saw um, Arnold Schwarzenegger at the Maggie. You read that one too. You read that? Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, he was interested. Wow. I was intimidated. I could His not go up. His muscles bigger than my head. Yeah. He comes into the room. You gotta like turn to wipe his ass like this. His muscles are in the way. You gotta go. Wait, no. You can just hire someone to do that. <laughs> yeah, I did, did I reach. get it? I don't think I got it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's he's cool. It's not a tumor. <laughs> it's a lump. <laughs> oh god. All right. So, Karen, next movie, Fat Camp. What did you think of that one? I didn't really like that one. You didn't like? Yeah. Nah. I not thought it was long. just like another generic like comedy. You know, yeah. nothing different. Basically, it's about this young guy. He gets kicked out of his mother's house, played by Viv- Vivica A. Fox. That sounds like real life shit. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. It's <laughs> home. Um, <laughs> that sure so, does. so he's like, he works out all the time, and he's kind of a slacker. He he graduated high, uh, college, but he can't get a job. The only thing he knows how to do is work out. So his uncle gets him a job at a fat camp. 
uh, to try and get the kids into shape. And it's about him meeting another counselor who's beautiful. And of course, you know, romantic sparks fly. And um, basically it's all about him kind of changing and stop being an asshole and just like respecting the kids and being their buddy and coach. Oh, wow. That's pretty yeah. really cool. I mean, I, I, I think I described it better than it actually is. <laughs> but it's, wow. kind of, it's like kind of like heavyweights in a way because it takes place at a, at a fat camp. No shit. But, um, What's the name of that again? It's just, uh, it's just called Fat Camp. Fat Camp? But the better movie is Heavyweights. Yeah. Was that part one and part two? No, no, no. That, that <laughs> came out in 1995. It's it a sounds real relatable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're, they're similar in that. Uh, right. But um, it's okay. You know, I, it'll end up on cable late at night, like that type of movie. That's awesome. I love movies like yeah, that. Yeah, then perfect. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, now you got HBO Go, so you can watch anything you want, anytime you want. Yeah. So, yeah. It's crazy. But that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of uh, technology. I think you were probably talking about e to Evan about that right today. Yeah. Or in, in previous, he always mentions. Previous, yeah. You, you got all this uh, media coming at you, and it's you know it's too much. <laughs> I could spend uh, you know ten yep. years and not make oh, a dent. Yeah. But um yeah, um so yeah that's that was Evan to a T by the way. That was good. That was good. Turn around. <laughs> Evan's probably watching over there. He's probably watching all the time. Fucking assholes. <laughs> It's all with we love. love you, Evan. Yeah, love it's all you, with love. Um, <laughs> nice, nice. So, okay, one more movie to talk about. This one I like more than you, I think. Yeah. It's called Fun mm -hmm. Mom Dinner. And basically it's about a group of women, four women, who the only thing they have in common is that they have kids in preschool. So they decide to just hang out one night, get dinner and drinks, and craziness happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did you think of it? Um, another, again, like another kind of generic comedy, kind of like Bad Moms kind yeah, of Yeah, I was feel, just thinking so, yeah. Bad Moms. Oh, that, I was thinking Bridesmaids. Yeah, kind of like, I guess a comedy. Bridesmaids was a horror? <laughs> yeah, no. It's not a horror. It had some horrific horror. scenes in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, like the shit you saw on the street. That was great. That was bad. Okay. But I, I thought of Bad Moms. <laughs> I just thought of Bad Moms. You thought, it, you thought it was like the Bad Moms or something? Kind of like the same. <laughs> Idea, I guess, kind of like them. Uh, oh, we have kids, you know. But in a horror format. Yeah, it was like comedy, though. Yeah. It's yeah. Comedy. yeah, it's not horror. It's not horror. It's horror. Just comedy. Comedy. Right. Yeah. So, oh, okay. and it's got um, Molly Shannon. She's in it, and Katie Al Asselton, Tony Collette, Tony Collette. Yeah. Would I like it? Uh, no, I don't think so. You, yeah. I don't know if you maybe. Because I'm very picky with comedy. So yeah, it's know. a, it's a. I don't want to say chick flick, but there are. It's very woman centric. I, I like bad moms. I wasn't a big fan of bridesmaids. I like bad. I like bad moms. Yeah. I love that movie. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, I definitely think it's geared more to like women overall. So yeah, like but I enjoyed that. it actually. You know, so. I probably I might like it. I don't yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the guy? Uh, for fun mom dinner. <laughs> It's a terrible title. Terrible title. I was <laughs> just saying, like, like, I'm like, what? Yeah, it's bad. But yeah, like Bad Moms and Bridesmaids. I mean, maybe like a female hangover, that type. Okay, that, I, I, okay, like that, that, that I, would I would definitely like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah, uh, anything left to uh, plug? I think we've covered everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the grand finale. <laughs> oh, no. He said plug. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm so sorry. It's all right. So, it's the vulgar it, comedy, everybody. Don't mind me. Anything you guys looking forward to seeing in the theaters? It's coming out. The soon. new It movie. Oh, I want to yeah. see if they get if it gets butchered or not. Which they're probably going to butcher yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it looks Tim, interesting. It does. It looks. I just don't. I, I mean, it looks like it might be good bad. Yeah. It's not going to be the original. Well, movie. I don't know if it's going to be good or bad, but I do know that it. There's a good movie on Netflix now called Clown, where it's about a, a father who he gets this old uh, clown costume for his son's birthday. He puts it on, and after the party, he can't take it off. It like becomes oh, wow. part of his skin. He becomes yeah, like this creep. You saying, saw it? Yeah. It was good, right? I interviewed like the Tom like, Hatton. It's, like, like, yeah. it's on Netflix. I, I think it's still there. Yeah. And it's um yeah I, we interviewed did you interview the main actor? Uh, the, like the main actor and the main actress like the husband and wife like oh, cool. the father and wife yeah. and his wife and stuff. So, cool. Yeah, it was interesting. I hope they don't yeah. butcher it. Though. That's gonna. I, I really hope they don't butcher they it. They are. I mean, I, 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 it's Hollywood. It's sad but true. Why can't they be original and have actually talent to <laughs> create new? Right, movies? right. Like what the. I, I but I've seen the images of the of the creature of the clown. He looks legitimately scary. Yeah, that's what I'm but saying. it's not Tim Curry. Yeah, it's not Tim Curry though. Right, right. But it look, looks 
decent at least. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's going to be too far butchered. I mean, it's going to they're going to butcher it. Let's just yeah. face it. But how bad the butchering job is that, yeah. that remains to be seen. That right, right. See. I have high hopes, but not at the same time I have low yeah, hopes. Exactly. <laughs> All right, guys, that's been our show. This is uh, Unger the Radar. I'm Randy Unger, and thank you to Zainab Ali. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, Vinny the Guido. Mm -hmm. thank Always you. a pleasure. No, no, thank you for having us on. Yeah. Thank you for having us. I, mean, awesome. I thought it was just going to be her, and then you're like, hey, you want to come home? I'm like, fuck it, <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, well, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Both of you, thank you. Thank you so much for thank having you. us on. Thanks to Jen for doing having this whole setup for us. Yeah. This is amazing. Thank <laughs> you so much. Shout no out problem. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> And thanks, Karen Berndello. Thank you, Great for a show. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. God bless. Thank Ciao. You.